Hello you viewers, uh, in this session we are going to learn about complex functions. So, uh, uh, I will start uh, by defining uh, what, a com what I mean by a complex function. So, uh, a complex valued function of a complex variable or a complex function for short uh, is a rule that assigns a unique complex number w to each complex number z belonging to a set d. So, uh, that is the definition of a uh, complex valued function of a complex variable or a complex function in short. So, uh, an example is in order. So, uh, an example uh, is as follows f of z we usually use symbols f, g, h etcetera to denote uh, functions complex functions. Okay. So, f of z uh, given by z square for each z in the complex plane uh, is an example of a uh, complex function. So, here uh, the set D is all of C, because we are uh, giving this rule f of z equals z squared for each z uh, in all of the complex plane. So, uh, the set D here is C okay. and let us do an example computation f of uh, 3 plus i, 3 plus i is a complex number. Uh, so, f of 3 plus i um, is going to give you 3 plus i squared. So, this is uh, 9 minus 1 plus 6 i, which is 8 plus 6 i. Okay. So, uh, given a uh, complex number, we can compute uh, what this rule f does to that given complex number. Okay. So, uh, another example. So, let me call this example 1. Uh, another example uh, can look like g of z equals z minus 1 divided by i z squared, where uh, this rule is for each z in uh, c minus the set 0. So, uh, if you remove the 0 in the complex uh, plane, uh, then this rule g uh, tells you what to do with uh, any given number z in the complex plane minus 0. Okay. So, uh, this is another example of this of this function and um, now the set d which appears in the definition. The set d in the definition is called the domain of the complex function of the complex function. And uh, the set So, uh, so before I say this, let me uh, let me give the uh, function a name. Uh, so, let the complex function in the definition be denoted by. A symbol f, let us say. 
okay then uh, <coughs> the set f of z such that uh, z is in the set d okay the set of all f of z such that z is in d uh, is called the range of the complex function f So, we understand the domain and the range okay. and <coughs> we often call the elements of T as points okay. and um, if z belongs to D, okay, if z is a point okay, uh, then f of z is called the image the image of the point z under the function f okay so these are uh, uh, some terminology we keep uh, using okay so this is some terminology we'll keep using and then uh, we will uh, also follow the following notation. Okay. So, if we write f colon d to c, okay, uh, we will mean uh, this means uh, that f is a uh, complex function. Uh, with domain D. Okay. So, uh, that is the notation we will keep using. And uh, if a complex function is provided to you uh, with a certain domain, we can always reduce the domain in some sense and uh, artificially restrict the uh, given complex function to that reduced domain. Okay. So, uh, here is uh, what we can do uh, in the example f of z equals z squared. We saw that uh, uh, okay, and we saw that d is equal to c. So, this rule f of z equals z squared uh, was given for every complex number uh, z. Uh, now, what we can do is uh, we can restrict Uh, uh, d to be let us say uh, the ball of radius 1 around uh, uh, the origin okay, uh, which is uh, definitely contained in the complex plane okay, and write f from uh, b 0 1 uh, to uh, c given by f of z equals z square. Okay. So, uh, this technically uh, this f now is a, a restriction, it is a new function, it is a restriction of the uh, given function f of z equals z square. Okay. So, uh, so this so uh, can say that this f this f uh, is a restriction sorry. of the uh, original function defined on all of C. Okay. So, that is uh, that is something we can do, we can always restrict the domain of a given function. Okay. So, uh, now we will see some uh, more classes of examples of complex functions, which will be uh, which we will keep using uh, uh, in the lectures to follow. So, uh, examples, uh, 
the first class of examples is constant functions. We will often use the word constants uh, to mean the constant uh, functions uh, whenever appropriate. Okay. So, uh, let us take uh, f from c to c given by uh, f of z is equal to c, where c is a fixed constant. So, these kind of functions are called uh, constant functions okay. and uh, the second uh, kind of functions are polynomial functions. So, uh, these are functions from C to C uh, defined by Uh, f of z is a n z power n plus a n minus 1 z power n minus 1 plus so on uh, until plus a a 0. Okay. So, here uh, n is a positive integer okay, or let me say it is a non negative integer it could be 0. Okay. And uh, a n, a n minus 1 etcetera until a 0 are complex constants. So, for each choice of n and for each choice of these constants a n uh, through a 0, you get a different uh, polynomial. Okay. So, uh, you get a pol polynomial and so you can construct different polynomials this way. Okay. So, uh, for um, okay, so in general we uh, try to assume that a n is uh, not equal to 0. Um, otherwise, uh, uh, it's uh, it's useless to write the first term a n z power n. Okay, so uh, a, an example of a polynomial function uh, is as follows: f of z given by three z squared minus two plus i times z uh, plus thirteen minus root two i. Okay, so this is an example of a uh, polynomial. Okay. So, here uh, the highest power of uh, z uh, carrying a non zero coefficient is two. Okay. So, uh, we say that f is a second degree polynomial. Okay. So, in general uh, the highest power of uh, z which has a non zero coefficient uh, is called uh, the degree of that polynomial. Okay. So, uh, in the case uh, of uh, this generic uh, presentation f of z here, uh, he, we say that the degree of this polynomial is n. <coughs> okay. So, uh, notice that the constant functions can be considered as uh, polynomials, they are uh, polynomials of, of degree 0. Okay. So, uh, the first class strictly speaking uh, is a uh, part of this second class of examples namely polynomial functions. Okay. So, uh, the third class of functions that I want to talk about um, or uh, is the rational functions. Okay. So, 
So, these are uh, functions uh, of this of the sort p by q, where p and q are polynomial functions. Okay. So, uh, let p of z and q of z be polynomial functions, where q of z is uh, not equal to the constant 0 polynomial, it can be any other than the uh, constant 0 polynomial, okay. then uh, p of z uh, by q of z is called a rational function. Okay. So, uh, I will rewrite this, I will say uh, then f of z given by p of z by q of z is called a rational function. Okay. So, uh, <coughs> here uh, the domain is not really all of the complex plane uh, necessarily, but it is uh, it's all those uh, points in the complex plane, which skip the zeros of the polynomial q of z. Okay. So, uh, so, the domain of f is uh, the set z in complex plane, such that q of z is not equal to 0, okay. because at those points where uh, q is 0, uh, the denominator uh, assumes the value 0. Uh, and at such points f uh, is not defined the way uh, it has been presented. Okay. So, uh, that is a rational uh, function. So, simple examples uh, can be uh, as follows f of z equals a z plus b by c z plus d, where uh, a, b, c, d are complex numbers okay. uh, and c and d are not both zeros. Okay. Uh, is a rational function. Okay. And uh, these are called uh, linear fractional uh, transformations, the word transformations we will see why uh, that is being used. Okay. And under the condition that uh, uh, a d minus b c is not equal to 0, uh, we will give them a name called a Mobius transformation and we will study their properties in detail later. So, uh, this is called, so let me say that f um, is called linear fractional transformation okay and the domain of f is essentially uh, all of the complex plane minus the set uh, minus d by c okay if c is not zero Okay. So, and the domain is all of C if C is indeed 0. Okay. So, uh, that is a uh, rational function. Okay. So, uh, so, another kind of example of this uh, rational function is as follows f of z, uh, let me use a different symbol. Uh, example 2 g of z given by 3 z power 4 minus 2 plus i z by uh, 2 z minus 3 i. Okay. So, this is a rational function uh, defined on uh, for each z belongs to the complex plane minus uh, the point 3 i by 2. 
So, at 3 i by 2 the denominator uh, uh, assumes a value of 0. So, we remove the point 3 i by 2 uh, and the rest is the is the domain for this g. Okay. So, uh, so next uh, we have seen three classes of uh, these examples and we will build on this repertoire of examples. We will uh, construct more and more uh, examples, classes of examples. Okay. So, uh, uh, before moving on uh, we will uh, now uh, talk about the real and imaginary parts of uh, a complex function. Okay, so, real and imaginary parts of a complex function. Okay. So, um, let let us see, uh, let us start with an example. Okay. Let f of z be uh, the polynomial uh, z cube. Okay. So, f of z is z cube for uh, uh, for z belonging to the complex plane. Okay. So, we, uh, we generally uh, write uh, a complex number z uh, as x plus i y. Okay. So, writing uh, z as x plus i y uh, we see that we can calculate x plus i y cube using uh, the complex number uh, arithmetic. So, this gives us x cube uh, minus uh, 3 x y square okay, uh, plus i times 3 x squared y minus y cube. Okay. You just expand the cube and uh, substitute i squared equals minus 1 uh, to get this expression. Okay. And uh, from, from here uh, we want to call, okay. so call x cube minus 3 x y squared uh, to be the real part of f. Okay. Uh, so, um, we see that this expression of f okay, as x cube minus 3 x y squared plus i times uh, etcetera uh, is valid for every complex number x plus i y. Okay. So, it has been calculated generically. Okay. So, uh, this x cube minus 3 x y squared is always going to denote uh, the real um, component of uh, the image of uh, a point z under f. Okay. And then uh, similarly call uh, 3 x squared y minus y cube, which is essentially the coefficient of i here okay, uh, to be uh, the imaginary part of f. Okay. So, um, so, in general Okay, so, this is an example of f of z equals uh, z cube. Okay. So, in general if we uh, take a complex function in general if um, f from d to c a domain d to c is a function okay, and um, f of x plus i y is equal to uh, u of x comma y plus i times v of x comma y. Okay. So, uh, in the example just present presented uh, notice that the real part uh, was an expression in terms of x and y okay. and likewise the imaginary part of f was uh, an expression uh, in terms of x and y. Okay. So, in general if f of x plus i y um, is a function uh, with uh, u okay, uh, with this u of x y plus i times v of x y presentation okay, for uh, each x plus i y belonging to d okay, then u of x y okay, uh, is called the real part of f and 
v of x y is called the imaginary part of f. Okay. So, uh, notice that uh, u is uh, can be construed as a function uh, a real valued function of two real variables. Okay. So, uh, let me say this in the uh, following way if uh, d is a subset of the complex plane. Okay. So, d which appears to be the domain of f okay, uh, is a uh, subset of c. Okay. So, uh, if d is thought of as uh, a subset of R 2. Okay. So, we have uh, we have given geometry to the complex numbers, uh, it is a complex plane, we represent it as a complex plane. So, if we think of numbers in D, the complex numbers in D as points x comma y in R 2, okay, uh, then uh, u okay, uh, is a function from D contained in R 2 to R. Okay. So, u of x y after all is an expression which gives you a real number. Okay. So, uh, u uh, is such a function okay, and v from d contained in R 2 to R. Okay. Uh, okay, R R real valued. Of course, real valued functions of two real variables, two independent uh, real variables x and y. Okay. So, uh, <coughs> so, in general it is a uh, good exercise to uh, practice with a few functions uh, what its real and imaginary uh, parts are going to be. So, uh, uh, the viewer is advised to uh, pick a few functions and uh, find their real and imaginary uh, parts. So, next we want to talk about uh, visualizing uh, these complex functions. What I mean by that is uh, we had a, a nice picture for real valued functions of real variables. Okay. So, in calculus uh, we draw graphs of functions of one real variable. Okay. So, uh, in the case of complex functions, uh, we are uh, we are not that lucky uh, uh, to draw graphs directly, because uh, in the case of uh, one variable real functions, uh, uh, we had we needed one axis for input. Okay. So, the x axis was the input axis, the picture for a real numbers is a real line okay and uh, the y axis is uh, was the output axis so we uh, we plot the inputs on the x axis and the outputs which are real numbers on the y axis okay so all in all we needed a plane uh, to pictureize uh, to to visualize these functions uh, from r to r okay so from f from a contained in R to R. Okay. So, the graph is some subset of uh, the plane, okay. but in the case of functions from uh, some subset of the complex plane to complex plane, we need uh, two dimensions uh, essentially the plane uh, to uh, draw the domain okay, uh, to pictureize the domain and two more dimensions uh, to uh, pictureize the uh, the range. So, all in all we need uh, four dimensions to pictureize uh, this graph in one piece. Okay. So, so, since we cannot visualize uh, four dimensions uh, uh, at least uh, on, on the board. Okay. So, what we will do is uh, we will uh, try to uh, draw one piece of uh, a complex plane for visualizing the domain. Okay, and another piece of uh, complex plane for uh, visualizing the range of this function f. Okay. So, let me explain uh, with an example. Okay. So, here is uh, my first example. 
ओके सो विजुअलाइजिंग कॉम्प्लेक्स फंक्शंस सो लेट अस कंसीडर एफ फ्रॉम सी टू सी डिफाइंड बाय f of z equals z plus b a simple example z plus b okay so b is uh, a fixed complex number okay so this function uh, the domain is of course all of the complex plane so this picture here of a plane is th that for the domain equals the complex plane okay this is the real axis and that's the imaginary axis okay and i need another piece of this complex plane to pictureize the range of this function okay so this is the this is for the range or the output of this function okay so uh if i take origin so i will use a uh, uh, cross mark to denote this origin okay so i can calculate where origin goes to f of 0 is 0 plus b it goes to the complex number b okay so right here in the domain itself let us imagine that p is some number over there okay so let me put a dot for p okay so b this is b uh, and uh, b let me call this b1 plus i b2 okay that's a fixed constant okay so we know that this distance okay so this distance right here is uh, b1 okay and the vertical uh, distance of uh, b from the x axis or the real axis is b2 okay so uh, the image of uh, origin now is going to be that exact point like we calculated here it's going to be that exact point uh, b okay so this cross mark here in the domain goes to this cross mark here in the range okay so in general okay so in general if you pick uh, a point x plus i y Okay, let us calculate what is f of x plus i y. This is going to be x plus i y plus b, okay, which is b one plus i b two. Okay, so this is going to be x plus b one plus i times y plus b two. Okay, so what this means uh, in okay in terms of pictures is that uh, this point x plus i y uh, is Uh, translated uh, via this uh, this number b okay so uh, what that means is that if you imagine uh, this point b in the domain here um, to be the end point of a vector which starts at the origin okay then take any other point let me uh, say that is x plus i y okay so this is x plus i y so imagine the vector b uh, starting at the point x plus i y so here is the vector b starting at the point x plus i y okay so the image of the point x plus i y uh, is going to be exactly that uh, the end point of that vector uh, which originated at x plus i y so here is your image uh, f of x plus i okay so the image of x plus i y is going to be that uh, f of x plus i y okay, of 0 okay so if you if you in general consider um, any contour here let me draw another picture okay so here is a picture for the domain and here is a picture for the range
Okay. So, generalizing what we have done, if you take any contour, let us say, uh, let us say a circle of unit radius, okay, uh, okay, so circle of radius 1 centered at 0. Okay. So, this is uh, absolute z modulus of z equals 1. Okay. So, uh, the image of this circle under uh, the given uh, function is uh, essentially the translation of this circle by uh, b units. Okay. So, this circle moves to a position like that. Okay, where we saw that, uh, okay, so although the circle looks enlarged, it's not really enlarged. Uh, okay, so here is the origin, the image of the origin. So the center moves to B. Okay, and uh, and the image of this uh, modulus of z equals one is all such points. Uh, such that modulus of z minus b is equal to 1. Okay. So, the image of uh, set of all z such that modulus of z equals 1 is going to be uh, set of all z such that modulus of z minus b now is going to be 1. Okay. So, etcetera. So, any uh, any uh, contour or any uh, region uh, in the domain is uh, is moved by the vector p. So, uh, you can imagine f to be uh, a transformation it, it is a uh, it is it moves any uh, portion in the domain uh, to some portion in the range. Okay. So, it is a transformation that way. Okay. So, uh, we will see another example of visualization. Okay. So, uh, here is an example f of z equals uh, let us say a z where okay, for z belongs to c where a is a fixed non zero constant. So, uh, f uh, multiplies a given uh, complex number z with the complex number, the fixed complex number a. Okay. So, uh, for visualizing this function, uh, it is better that we use uh, polar coordinates. Okay. So, if a is written as uh, uh, r times cosin theta plus i sin theta. Okay. Uh, <coughs> okay. And uh, if b or if z equals some rho times cosine phi plus i sin phi, okay, then f of z is going to be uh, rho r times we saw this earlier cosine theta plus phi plus i times sin theta plus phi. Okay. So, what this uh, does is that if this function does is that if we take a, uh, a complex number z any place. So, uh, it has a certain modulus okay, and a is, uh, a is a complex number with modulus r. Okay. So, uh, the image of this point z is going to be uh, a, uh, a complex number with modulus uh, r times the modulus of z. Okay. So, uh, let me first also say that uh, z is a number, z is a number with, with, with uh, an angle uh, phi uh, with the positive x axis. Okay. So, it is an argument. So, let us assume, let us pretend that uh, uh, 
uh, phi is uh, the angle of opening with the positive x axis. Okay. Uh, so, then your a times z is going to be okay, a times z is going to be a complex number whose modulus is going to be uh, rho times r. Okay. So, the length of this vector is rho times r okay. and uh, the angle of opening with the positive x axis is going to be phi plus uh, theta. Okay. So, um, this theta and r uh, of course, are from A. Okay. So, so, what we can uh, uh, I mean the way to visualize f is that uh, it uh, elongates a given vector z or contracts it appropriately uh, depending on whether r is greater than 1 or less than 1 okay, and uh, rotates the whole of the complex plane. Okay. So, uh, rotates the complex plane by an angle theta, where theta is this fixed angle coming from A. Okay. Uh, so, that is the visualization of this function uh, A z. Okay. So, in general if I or combining these two examples, if I give you a function f of z equals uh, a z plus uh, b. Okay. So, this function uh, it, uh, it actually uh, elongates uh, a given complex number okay, by the modulus of a okay, and then it rotates uh, by uh, the angle which is the argument of a okay, and then translates the complex plane. Uh, by uh, the constant b. Okay. So, uh, f of z can be uh, visualized as okay, can be visualized as follows. So, it is it is a combination of three actions. Okay. So, first uh, f um, or let, let me say uh, three actions. Okay. So, the first of the actions is um, z is elongated or contracted by a factor the modulus of a okay and second uh, then it is rotated Okay, in the counterclockwise direction direction okay, uh, by an angle argument of uh, A, okay, then it is translated. by uh, a vector p. Okay. So, this function f can be uh, pictured as uh, the combination of these three actions uh, in that order which are uh, which is outlined there. Okay. So, um, that is another example. Okay. So, let us see uh, yet another example of uh, visualizing this function. So, here is the example of f of z equals z q. Okay. So, this is a third degree polynomial, okay. a simple polynomial okay, for each z belongs to c. Okay. So, uh, in order to visualize uh, this function, Okay. Uh, what we will do is we will once again write z in uh, polar coordinates. Okay. So, f of uh, r times cosine theta plus i sin theta. So, if I take a point uh, r times cosine theta plus i sin theta uh, which is z, okay, uh, then the image of this is going to be r cube times cosine 3 theta plus i sin 3 theta. 
ok. So, uh, f can be visualized as follows. Okay. So, uh, given a complex number z, okay, with modulus r and argument theta. Okay, first. Uh, elongate z. So, this is performed in the complex plane, this kind of uh, operations are performed on on the points in the complex plane. Okay. So, first elongate uh, uh, z, okay, uh, the vector z okay, uh, as uh, r cube. Okay. And then secondly, uh, rotate Z okay, uh, to an angle okay, or uh, okay, then rotate Z uh, up to the line up to the ray uh, phi equals 3 theta. Okay. So, let us see an example of how to do this. Okay. So, if I take uh, z equals 1 plus i, okay. so this can be written as root 2 times cosine pi by 4 plus i sin pi by 4. Okay. So, this can be thought of as a vector like that. Okay. Then what f does is, it first uh, elongates this point z okay, uh, to the length uh, root 2 cube, which is essentially 2 root 2. Okay, along the same line. So, this angle is pi by 4. So, uh, so first keep the angle as pi by 4 and elongate this vector to root 2 q okay, followed by okay, then followed by okay. now rotate this point uh, about the origin okay, uh, until you reach 3 times this angle pi by 4 which is 3 pi by 4. Okay, so, here is 3 pi by 4. So, you rotate this uh, about the origin. Okay. So, until you reach this point root 2 cube times cosine 3 pi by 4 plus i sin 3 pi by 4. Okay. And so, now this is the image of the point you started off with. Okay. So, uh, so that is how you can visualize uh, z cube. Okay. So, all in all, uh, if you if you take uh, this wedge, okay, so this angle is 2 pi by 3. Okay. So, this infinite wedge. Okay. Uh, so, all the complex numbers uh, which range in their argument from 0 to 2 pi by 3, okay, then the image of this you can convince yourself is all of the complex uh, plane. Okay. So, the image of this is going to be uh, or the f applied on this piece is going to be all of the complex plane. Okay. So, when you want uh, when you want to apply um, f on this piece let us say. Okay. So, this is 4 pi by 3 this angle is 4 pi by 3. 
Okay. So, when you want to apply f on the piece on the uh, infinite wedge between uh, 2 by 2 pi by 3 and 4 pi by 3, then you will once again get uh, the whole of the complex plane. And likewise, when you want to apply f uh, on the wedge between uh, 4 pi by 3 and 2 pi. Okay. So, you will once again get another copy of the complex plane for the uh, range. Okay. So, uh, the image uh, Okay, so, so if you pick one point here in the complex plane, there are three pre images uh, here. So, one lying here, one lying in this infinite wedge and another lying in this infinite wedge. Okay. So, uh, this is how uh, we visualize uh, this complex function. Okay. So, in general if you consider f of z equals z power n for n greater than 1. Okay, and uh, uh, then this function takes the wedge between theta equals zero. This can be uh, thought of as uh, theta equals zero, and this can be thought of as theta equals two pi by n. So this is an infinite ray uh, standing for theta equals two pi by n. So this angle is two pi by n. Okay, so uh, this function. Uh, takes all the points uh, between these two infinite rays okay, uh, including the rays okay, and sends it to all of the complex plane. Okay. So, essentially any complex number here in the in the uh, co-domain or the range has a has a one pre image uh, in this infinite uh, wedge. Okay. Uh, so, that is how uh, we visualize this function f of z equal z power n and, and then you can keep going 2 pi by n and then uh, 2 times 2 pi by n theta equals 2 times 2 pi by n etcetera and once again the image of this is going to be uh, all of the complex plane. Okay. So, uh, you can uh, practice and keep uh, drawing more of these uh, uh, pictures. Uh, for polynomials. So, for example, uh, try the following, uh, try to picturize f of z equals uh, 3 z to the power 4. Okay. So, try to uh, visualize, okay. so exercise. Okay. So, uh, visualize f. Okay. 